Gary Schofield too. Oh, hey boys, you okay? Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's, uh, uh, yeah, gonna be his, back. Good. His fan club. Yeah, gonna be back, and uh, and I say I won't be for sure. Let's get ripped in. It's better get ripped in as well, isn't it? To be honest with you, you know, from a point of view, I think uh, the first week of uh, the rugby league has been brilliant. The entertainment's been great. The attractiveness, and as I kept saying many, many times before, uh, you know, the COVID came. You know, play with that vision, uh, play with that awareness. Controversy is um, from from referees, and then also from a sad point of view. Over the last three weeks, we've lost, I would say, four legends of the game. You know, not just the very old Des Drummond, but the immortal Johnny Raper. And, uh, you know, the great comment what uh, uh, Roy Master said about Johnny Raper. Um, Sydney, lo Sydney lost part of itself with the death of Johnny Raper. And Johnny Whiteley yesterday, well, he's Mr Hull, isn't he? And uh, part of Hull died yesterday because the past of Johnny Whiteley and the, the New Zealand great, uh, and also fell apart. But... Uh, it's great to be back, boys. Great to be back. I'm looking forward to these two hours. I don't know what lockdown's done to you, but you come back positive. Look, looking forward, looking forward for these two hours, that is for sure. So, first of all, I think we should talk about Des and Olsen, because you've played with them and yeah. against them. Mm. Yeah. Um, Des was, I mean, we use the word superstar, but because of what he did on the programme, superstars, <laughs> he actually took the ability to a whole new audience. But was... It, it's just this, this whole story of him getting into rugby league, mm. being on a bus, going to watch his, his brother and then ending up scoring a hat-trick. Um, tell us about the real Des Drummond. Well, the, uh, the Des, what, uh, what I got to know and also to, not just myself, but to all the players from, from Lee, Warrington, Workington and the, the Great Britain boys and the other clubs, uh, what he played for is that um, they were different. And he knew you were different, don't worry about that, not just... Uh, from his pace, what he do, but also too defensive wise, because as everybody will know, if Des Drummond caught you, then you knew. But if Des Drummond missed you, somebody in the stand and about the six row were getting hit because that's how <laughs> that's how bad he was at times, you know, really defensive wise. But as but as a character, it was it was great. And one thing what he was for me, most certainly, because you know, getting selected uh, for the eighty four tour and Desi Desi was my winger and uh, he put me on the international map, you know, and then two tries what I scored in, in the uh, in the test series against the Aussies after the disaster of 84, where we only scored one try from there. And Desi was part of that with the, the big confrontation against Eric Groff. I think, bless his soul, Desi, I, I would imagine Desi would agree that uh, Groff got the better of him, but Eric Groff got the better of, um, of everybody. But he certainly put me on, on the map. But from a rugby league point of view, though, he was, he, he was our first superstar. There's no two ways about it. We knew what program what he, he was, but... He just took it to the whole new level. He took it out there uh, to the country. And what did he do? The under me, is it 10.84? Yeah, Olymp Olympic time. In, uh, Olympic record. So he could have got selected for, uh, you know, for the Olympics, but he turned it down, stayed with the greatest game of all. And I think the record speaks for itself. His try scoring, his, uh, his, his appearances and his performances, his consistent uh, performances, made him simply one of the best. And uh, when I found out... Um, you know, to three weeks ago on, on the Saturday, and I gave uh, Ellery a call, and, and literally, literally, we, we, we were in tears because we've lost one of our teammates, but we've lost, well, I would say, I would say one of the greats of the game. It's very, very sad for you. Also, Philip um well, he was uh, talking of tackling. If he hit you, well, if if, if, if he hit you, and, uh, and well, his backside was like a gable end, to be honest with you, you know, so you had to, you had to have arms like Arnold Schwarzenegger to get anywhere near him, but. Uh, you know, he, he just had the uh, the talent where he was allowed to express himself. Don't get me wrong, he, he, he didn't like uh, Balmain Tigers under Frank Stanton because Frank tried to, to take all that away from him. But certainly in a, in a Kiwi jersey, like many of the Kiwi guys do, you know, they seem to grow another leg or seem to grow another pair of arms or this sort of thing and then fuse as him. And, uh, and he certainly showed that and from a skill uh, point of view. Uh, he was one of, certainly... One of New Zealand's best, and um, did you play with him at Balmain? No, I didn't play with him at Balmain. Because your pass no. must have just crossed. He, he, uh, his pass uh, just crossed um, from there. I think he was on on his way, or, or maybe unless he was in the. He was just after you. I think it was. Uh, uh, just I think maybe just before me was it? Also, I went there in '85. I, I, I don't think he was there. No, he wasn't there um, when I was there. To, to be honest with you, from there, but certainly. Certainly a great for New Zealand rugby league and a very well. I saw him at the World Cup in 2017. It was in great form. He, he looked very well. He was very happy uh, in himself, and I was very sad again to uh, to, to lead of his death. And and then again, it's a bit somber, isn't it? But Johnny Raper, boy oh boy, I tell you what, uh, the people who uh, who have asked over the last what now 48 hours when I found out about uh, Johnny Raper's passing away, and uh, 
Just speaking to a good friend of mine yesterday, a, a massive, massive Leeds fan, a gentleman called John Penniston, and what he just would tell him would just seem, you look at the photograph in the League Express when you see Gazdier, you see Raper, you see Fulton, you see Churchill. And when I just mentioned their names, he just said, Scott, it was just something different. When the Aussies came over here touring in them days, and certainly when we went to Headingley, it was just something special because these players were very, very special. And Mr Raper certainly will fully, fully deserve, I think he's going to have a state funeral, like Bob Fulton did as well, and, and rightly so from there. Loved a glass of champagne. Loved it all, loved to drink well. And it's a, he, he was a character. You know, did because I read about the story uh, with, with Stuart Raper. Did, did, this is how popular he was, and, and the people what he knew at uh, Raper, uh, Johnny Raper was uh, Bob Hawker was the uh, who was the prime minister, and Stuart Raper was contacted, I think, by Cass to get to get to get his visa. Yeah. And anyway, so he said, you know, Dad, I need to get my visa within 28, 48 hours. And Johnny Raper said, just leave it with me. He said, what do you mean? He said, just leave it with me. You'll, you'll have you'll have your visa in the next twelve hours. Uh, Chuck was, that was his nickname, uh, Chuck Raper, straight on the phone to Bob Hawke, the Prime Minister. Within 12 hours, he had the visa and off he went. So that's how big oh, Johnny Raper was there and, and, and as a player and, uh, and, and, and as I say. Johnny Whiteley, well, Humberside will be in mourning because he was, he was Mr Hull. And as Roy Master said about um, Johnny Raper, a part of Hull died yesterday. Would he have looked after you when you signed for Hull? Would he have come and put an arm around you? Because he was... He was always there, he was always an ambassador, he always looked after people. Phil, Johnny Whiteley did that with everybody. Johnny Whiteley did that with everybody and the advice, well I tell you what, if anybody, if Johnny Whiteley went to any, any, any player and he didn't want to take Johnny Whiteley's advice, well, you're an idiot. You're an absolute idiot because not only did he know the game, not only did he play the game at the highest level, not only did he coach the game at the highest level, but he won everything at the highest level as well. So even just the little things, uh, what Johnny told you, you took on board. You took on board, whether you agreed with it or not, you took it on board because you thought, well, if this guy's giving me the respect, he's giving me some advice here, surely it's going to help me as a player, whether it's attacking-wise, whether it's defensive-wise, whether it's discipline-wise, whether it's once off the field, whether you're having too many sherbets or you won't have too many sherbets, or this sort of thing. The, um, the advice what he gave you was always, always the right advice. And uh, I, I guess what I'd like to put out there to the whole fans, you know, if we're on Twitter, what I'd like there to put out to the whole fans is, Quite simple, and um, who has been the most important signing Hull have ever made? And I will put three out there. I'd like to put four, but they won't agree if, if, if I put myself <laughs> as four, to be honest with you. But I'll put three. Who is the most important signing that Hull FC have ever made? And I will put Whiteley, Norton and Sterling. I'll tell you what, what a debate that is for the black and whites. So you've not seen him for 18 months. It's like, it's like nothing's happened. Thanks, thanks, thanks nothing's for coming, happened. goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> How are you anyway? Because obviously you've been hidden away. How are you? Yeah, yeah I'm all right, mate. Yeah, well, I've had a few, you know, 67, 90, I think everybody's known about my eye situation, you know, so uh, I've had a, a massive issue with my eye. Started with a detached retina. Cut a long story short, uh, it started December the, uh, December the 30th, 2019, until this present day. Now, uh, I had my eye removed uh, last September, but before then, it was seven operations, three laser treatments. I've had massive issues with, with eye pressure. Your eye pressure should be between 5 and 21. Mine got up to 82 and 78 and 70. Anyway, so in the end, I've had to have the eye removed because I just couldn't uh, cope with the discomfort anymore. Uh, it was coming down to where I was having to put 13 drops in a day. Well, to be honest with you, there's not enough hours in a day to put that. Anyway, so in the end, with all of it being uncomfy, I had the eye removed in September. I have a mould in at the moment. I had a template made. Two weeks ago, which then the, the, the artificial eye will be going in there permanently. Goes in the end of March. So, um, so yeah, it's been, for everybody, with we, we COVID as we well know, but from my, my own health point of view, uh, it's a life changer, losing, losing, your, losing your eyesight from there. But, hey, listen, there's more people in the world. And certainly, as we know, we've, we've a zone, you know, we, uh, with, a, we, uh, with Robbie Burrow. And, um, you know, what, what I'm feeling for me saying, I, I, I think of Rob, and then I just go, Scully. Stop morning, simple as that. <laughs>